The gauntlet has been set. If you're looking for a 13 inch ultra portable laptop, you have two main choices. The best selling Apple device is the MacBook Air that was recently updated with the new M2 chip. And the best selling Windows device is Dell's XPS 13. It's been number one on all the lists for years since it came out with its ultra slim bezels. Who's gonna to be top dog? Let's dive in and check it out. So obviously, let's look at the chassis. With these suckers closed, let's just take a look at the form and the function. They are both ultra, I say both, all three of them are ultra light, ultra portable, very, very good looking laptops, if I may say so myself. Dell did something interesting by dropping not one but two XPS 13 models, the standard 13 and the new XPS Plus. And oh, Apple did the same thing. They kept the old M1 Air with the old chassis like Dell's old XPS 13 and then brought out the new M2 Air with the new chassis like Dell's XPS 13 Plus. Interesting. So basically in the 13 inch range, you've got the new shiny high end option here and the regular same as last year, but maybe slightly better, maybe not, depending on if you go Dell or Apple, which one's going to win and the price points go with them. But we'll get to pricing later because look at these photos here. Look at the chassis, look at the build and design aesthetic. Dell has gone smaller. The bezels are unbelievably thin and it makes for a physically smaller device then the Apple, yes, they also shrank the bezels a touch, but not as far as Dell. And yet Dell managed to get a screen that doesn't have a notch. I'm sorry, I had to say it. The feel of both of them is really nice. As you look at these metallic machines, they definitely are premium. They shouldn't scratch up too easily, except for the midnight blue. The rest of the colors seem like they are tried and tested and for normal wear and tear everyday usage, you're gonna be just fine. You can see the, the chassis here, as you look at the underside of the dial, you can see the heat dissipation grill or basically where the hot air is gonna come out. The apple is on the back, although there's not really a ton of hot air coming out of the back of it. It is a fanless design. And as you're looking at these on the outside first, bear in mind that they are both beautiful devices. I don't think anybody's gonna buy a Dell XPS 13 or an M2 Air and look at it and think, man, this is a little bit ugly. Oh, I wish I'd have bought something different. They really do look cracking. And I think no matter which way you go, you're gonna be pleased with that. As you hold them in your hand, the apple is a little bit softer. The edges are a little bit rounder. And I talk about this a lot. They like that rounded corner thing, but they also like the rounded edges down the sides, down the back. Dell's gone for a a kind of sharper, more angular cut. You've got these very hard corners. You've got this kind of shiny brushed aluminum or brushed metallic kind of edge on the edges. Where else would it be? <laughs> but on the edges, I like them both. Honestly, in my hand, the MacBook feels comfier, but that's not to say the Dell doesn't feel comfy. It's really a personal preference thing. And I don't think you're gonna really mind which way you go, but as you open them up, that's when you really notice the first change. And that change is keyboards. XPS 13 has the standard Dell keyboard from last year, which really is fine. Not a whole lot of complaints about the keyboard. M2 on the MacBook Air has the more modern style of keys like the Pro 14 and 16, and it's moved away from the older style chiclet keyboard of the M1 Air. I think it's nicer. I think the key motion is, is better. I like the flatter, wider keys. Not that I've got fat fingers, but they just feel better to type on. And honestly, out of the two of them, the Dell is a firmer, more precise type. If you like that, the Apple is a softer, slightly more cushioned type. But then along comes the XPS Plus and it does something crazy. It takes the keyboard and it just stretches it to the outer limits. Look at these images. There is barely no gap between the keys and it looks super futuristic. It's like I'm on a Starship Enterprise and it looks awesome. Is it weird? And does it feel strange to type on? Yeah, absolutely. Will you get used to it in a few days? I think you will if it's your primary keyboard. But if you tend to dock a lot and you like to use a separate keyboard, of the three devices here that we're looking at, 
I think the XPS Plus is gonna be the one that's gonna catch out your muscle memory more than the other two. I mean, none of them really feel like a desktop keyboard equivalent, but Apple's Magic Keyboard is very similar in feel to the M2 Air. Dell's regular XPS 13 keyboard is very similar to most external minimal travel Windows keyboards. The Plus, dude, it's just out there. I don't know what to tell you. It's gonna take some getting used to, but the keys feel fine. I didn't have a whole lot of typos as I was using it and testing it. And so I don't think it's a real problem. It's just different. Now let's move to the trackpads and this is where things get a lot more interesting. Dell, unfortunately, have a quality control issue with trackpads. I have not had a Dell laptop delivered to me in the last two years, except one time that didn't have a trackpad issue. It was either loose, it rattled, when you press down to click, it's like there was a gap of air and then a secondary click was actually the click. And it seems to happen a lot. I may be unlucky, I may be extra picky, but it is what it is. You don't have that issue with an Apple because there is no movement, it's haptic, and Apple's haptics are glorious. But along came Dell with the XPS Plus and said, hey, we can play the haptic game too, check this out. No visible trackpad. It's just there and it has multi points of censoring to pick up your finger as you move across. And for all intents and purposes, holy moly, it works pretty good. I mean, it works really good. I didn't have any major issues with it and I kind of liked it. I do wish it was a little deeper, but that's a limitation of the physical size. And I think that's my final comment here before we get into the internals and the screens and things, as we talk about the chassis and the design elements, I still wish Dell would stretch the XPS 13 and make it a little bit larger, especially because the jump to the 15 is such a large jump. The 15 is a monster. And when you don't want a big heavy laptop to carry around, it's a real trade-off here going from 13 to 15. I think a 13.5 or a 13.6 that Apple have done with the M2 Air is the least that we should have in the smaller sizes. My personal preference is really to stretch it to 14. I love the 14s, the 14.2, the 14.4. To me, that's a great sweet spot. Let me show you the ports. They are both minimal devices. You do get MagSafe back on the M2 Air, so that frees up the two USB-C ports to be used entirely for whatever you want. And on the Dell, that's not the case. You've got a USB-C on either side, but one of those bad boys is the charging port. So that means if you are charging, you've only got one additional free. Apple stuck with the headphone jack. That's right. They killed it on the phone first before everybody else, but they kept it on the laptop. Dell didn't, which is surprising because I kind of figured they would. So if headphone jack is your jam, Apple's the way to go. No SD card slots, no HDMI slots. They're ultra portables and that's all you got. So webcams, 1080p on the Apple, 720p on the Dells. Come on, Dell, step it up. Just give us something decent. I know it's tiny and you didn't give us a notch, but I think you could do a little bit better. 720 is not enough for today. And if zooming is your thing, that's gonna be a black eye for the Dells. You know, Apple went 1080p. And then if you really want, you can use your $1,100 iPhone as a web camera as well with the new software, because we all wanna do that, right? No, we don't. But while we're looking at these screens, check out the footage, look at the colors, Look at the resolutions, look at what you can get, because this is where it gets interesting. M2 Air, you only have one option, Apple standard screen. And it is what it is. With the Dells, you get multiple options. You can go regular high def, you can go 3.5K OLED, you can go 4K, non-OLED. And the screens are beautiful. I can show you actually some footage of a Dell OLED versus non-OLED 4K, just so you can see. And they're incredibly close. So if you wanna save the battery life by going on OLED, you can do that and still have a glorious screen. And I do think that the higher end Dell screens are nicer than the Apple screen, but the lower end regular high def is not. And this is where it starts to get tricky because I don't wanna focus on price too much, but you can't ignore price, especially here. Apple made this M2 Air at 1199 as nothing more than an upsell device to the 15 or 16.99 for 16 gig 512. Now at 11.99 compared to the Dells, it's a decent price point. If you go with a lower spec 9315, the regular XPS, you can save a little bit. If you go with the plus, 
you can't quite get to 11.99. But when you get to 15.60.99, you're now in the high echelons of the Dells and you are getting a better screen and you are getting higher performance with the 16 gig, the 512, all that kind of stuff. The upgrades, in other words, are much more cost effective than Apple's upgrades. So the disparity gets wider and wider as you move along. But where it gets super interesting is the performance of the devices themselves. Regular 9315 or the regular Dell XPS is the U series processor. And that means low power, but lower performance you only get the P-series in the Plus. So you have to go to the better device. You have to spend a little bit more money and that gets you the power you're looking for. And I'm gonna throw some benchmarks up here while I'm talking about this. The challenge is even the P-series in multi-core cannot match the M2. In single core, they're very similar, but in multi-core, they're not. And across the board, nothing matches the M2 battery life. And so it puts you in a position where essentially, you are facing a dilemma. If Windows is your jam, it's hard to switch to Apple. But I can't escape the fact that it's a beautiful chassis, it's a beautiful screen, it's a 1080p webcam, and the battery life is killer. And oh, by the way, it performs really well. The negatives are the outrageous upgrade prices, the outrageous upgrade prices, and having to use Apple Mac OS. And before you all get in the comments and start hating on me for saying that, look, Mac OS isn't flawless and perfect. There are a lot of people that like Windows OS or need to use Windows OS. Ah, there are people like me that can go both ways and I can do different things in both, but I don't wanna be forced to have to use one over another and locked in. And this is where Apple gets sneaky with the little, well, we'll let you run one monitor, but not two. You know the device can do it, they just chose to turn it off. And I was reading some comments on Reddit today because I like to get on there from time to time. And some folks were, were, were jingling down the forum about everybody getting super excited. It's not a big deal who runs two screens anyway, but a lot of people run two screens. If you use this in a business setting, I guarantee you your staff are more productive with two screens. I live this every day in my own business. I don't need a super duper 16 gig, 32 gig M1 Max chip or anything else. I need a basic computer that can run Google Workspace in a browser on two monitors for my team. And Apple took that decision away from me and I have to spend $2,000 on a pro. That's where the XPS gets a whole lot more interesting because it might have a slightly worse webcam and it might not be quite as powerful on multi-core performance and the battery might not last quite as long. But again, a lot of people are docked for meaningful parts of the day running two screens. When you dodge, the battery's not an issue and you've got the two screens that you physically cannot get with the Mac. So I can't play you some speaker test audio because I keep getting dinged for playing music that's copyrighted. I can tell you, as is typical with Apple, they have magic going on when it comes to audio. Those speakers in that MacBook Air sound way better than a device that thin and the Dells cannot compete. So if you do play audio through your laptop a lot, which I don't think most of us do, but if you do, bear that in mind as well. That said, the audio on the Dell is not shockingly terrible either. We are not talking like a Mac Mini here, which shouldn't be allowed to exist from a speaker perspective. It's actually pretty decent. It's just not as decent as the MacBook Air. The choices you have are, what are the important things to you for the way that you work and the operating system you need to work in, and can you live with the compromises that are being forced on you, if I wanna use that word, by the manufacturer. The choice is yours, let me know in the comments below, and check out these two videos over here. Till next time, subscribe and be amazing.